You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's OBA with Arden Moore. The show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Are you ready for some football? Four legged football, that is. Now, prior to the Patriots and Seahawks squaring off for Super Bowl 49 at the University of Phoenix Stadium on Sunday, February 1st, be sure to tune in for the 11th annual Puppy Bowl on Animal Planet. And back on our show to get our tails a wagon to watch these young canine athletes tussle on the gridiron is TV host, actor, and the ref for the Puppy Bowl, the one and only Dan Shackner. Hey, Dan, welcome back. Hey, everybody. How are you? I'm calling you from a snowy New York City street. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this isn't just like a light dusting, is it? This is how dedicated this man is. Dan, be a weatherman for a minute. Give us the lowdown. This is radio. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. This is our busiest week. We're going from appearance and interview, just getting the word out about Puppy Bowl this Sunday. And you can't catch a cab right now in New York City because, (laughs) well... There's too much snow, so I am calling you, and I am dedicated to doing this interview and getting the word out. What's most exciting now, this year for us, is the amount of puppies. I don't know if I can dive right in and tell you what's going on, or if... Well, we're going to, yeah, we're going to dive in in a minute. Here's what I would like you to do. Dan, I want you to put the phone down and make a little snow angel, and we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back. So everybody, sit and stay. We'll be right back with Dan making a snow angel in snowy. (laughs) New York City. All right. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Hut, hut, pup, pup. Yep, that's right. The 11th Annual Puppy Bowl kicks off on Super Bowl Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern on Animal Planet. Back with his whistle, and he's probably got his pocket stuffed with some poop bags, is the yep. ref, the one and only, Dan Shackner. Dan, I'm so glad you're doing this show. You're back. It's snowing. Yeah. The cabbies can't make it, but darn it, you're I on was Pet Life Radio. Be, yeah, I was supposed to give you, you know, a nice quiet phone call. Instead, you're getting a cityscape snowy loud phone call. But that does not tamper my enthusiasm here. We are gearing up for the greatest Puppy Bowl ever. It's Puppy Bowl 11. We have 85 dogs participating this year. Wow. Make that bow wow. <laughs> you know, I was looking at the lineup. It's Team Rough versus Team Fluff. I mean, come on. If I'm on Team so Fluff, can't you be Team Gruff? I mean, come we on. We thought about gotta, that. Yeah. We thought about that. We played with the idea of Rough and 
rough, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, ultimately, we realize a lot of people, whether they're going to be the super more athletic and energetic dogs or not, they still want to see those really cute, fluffy dogs on Puppy Bowl. And they probably care a little bit less about the athleticism and more about the cuteness factor. So we had that team, you know, called Team Fluff. And why it's so exciting is that this is the first time we've ever attempted to put together two actual teams. You might remember in past puppy bowls, we've only ever had MVPs and right. their most valuable puppies, of course. And therefore, it's been more of an individual game. This is the first year it's a team game. We have a scoreboard. <laughs> this is tremendous. We have an actual score. We're going to keep score. We'll still do our MVPs, but now on top of it, we'll crown an actual team winner. By the way, if you think it's hard corralling a dog into a, you know, an O-line formation before the snap of a ball at Puppy Bowl, try organizing them into consistent teams. There's got to be somebody with a hot dog in their hand making them be yeah. able to look left and right on the line. I'm talking about the defense and offensive linemen. I mean, how yeah. do you get these pups? I mean, they're puppies, too. You know, they're not right. these well-obedient adult dogs. No, they're puppies and we want them to be. I mean, you know, we don't groom these guys. This is not like the Westminster Dog Show, which I love. There's no real, like, puppy preparation going on with these pups with handlers. The most that we do to to them is try to put a jersey on them to try to make them look like they belong to a team. That's a challenge enough because they're two-month-old puppies. The age cutoff here for these pups, in all seriousness, is between 12 and I think it's no older than 21 weeks. So if that's the cutoff, oh, my Lord, you really got some boundless energy going on. So, no, you really can't fight the tide. I mean, if they want to be rambunctious and play around, you let them do it. If they want to nap for a little while, take a little break on the sidelines, they want to do it. And, you know, they got to relieve themselves. I mean, it's really at their discretion. We just hope. And we try to get them to somewhere in the middle of that, drag that ball into the end zone so that we could score some touchdowns. Now, I hope you're wearing a rubberized ref suit so you don't, uh, if you get a little pee bowl at the puppy bowl, you know, it'll be a quick cleanup. You know, Albert Einstein once said that he has seven of the same suit in his closet. And he just changes it, you know, same exact suit because he doesn't want to waste mental energy on what he's going to wear. The same <laughs> thing with the puppy bowl and, and the ref outfit. I have seven ref outfits, one for every Good. day of the week. So no matter how dirty we get, I'm ready to go the next day all fresh. We've kind of gotten it down to poop. And speaking of poop, I understand. Tell me if these stats are correct. You guys yep. have 315 poop bags and 1,200 puppy pads? That's on a good day. I mean, really, there's so much going on. Remember, 85 dogs, 55 of them really in the starting lineup, meaning they really get the most action. And Mm -hmm. on the field at one time, we have between 12 and 20, depending on the breed, right? If they're smaller breeds, you know, we tend to keep only like, we'll tend to keep a larger amount. If they're larger breeds, we'll have a smaller amount on the field. But that, yes, uh, that involves a lot of cleanup. And thankfully, we have a terrific crew at Puppy Bowl that is willing to just jump in there and get the accidents that I might miss. Yeah, I think somebody said you have about 65 puppy escorts and 50 volunteers. That's really sounds nice. about and, right. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. But the names, come on. All right, I'm rooting for Drew Carey, a Cocker Spaniel. Oh, yeah. And Hemingway, okay. he's my favorite writer. And I'm just having a little problem with Lance, the Terrier mix. I'm hoping Lance gets adopted and gets a new name and never gets near a bicycle. What do you think, Dan? <laughs> That's a good point. I didn't even think of that version of Lance. You know, you know how it works, right, guys? If you adopt a dog, you can rename him or her. So, yes, I'm with you on that. Now, I, one I, I wouldn't rename yeah. would be Mr. Fantastic and Love USS Malloy. I mean, come on. These are clever names. But tell us about yeah. where these dogs are coming from. And people are yeah. going to be falling in love. They're going to be on Animal Planet tuning in at 3 Eastern. If you miss it, guys, it's going to be re-airing like five times that day. So don't yep. worry. But tell us Don't where worry. these pups are coming from and how do they get their paws on adopting one of these grid iron grids? Absolutely. That's our big, big issue here. Our big cause. The whole reason we do Puppy Bowl is to promote adoption awareness. And that's how it really all started, right? And right. this year, we are proud to say that we have 37 shelters from across the country and Puerto Rico yes. involved in, you know, allowing us to, I guess, use their dogs for the taping <laughs> of the show. And of course, it's a, sort of a mutual help, right? They help us to make this show great, but we help them and get attention to a shelter that might otherwise not get the attention it deserves. So 37 shelters all across the country, they fly in, they stay with us a couple of days and, you know, and they get their exposure. If you fall in love with a dog on on Animal Planet's Puppy Bowl, which will probably happen, and you really, truly want to adopt and you feel you're ready, we encourage everybody, it's so simple, go to the website, animalplanet.com slash puppy bowl. You'll go right to the site. You'll see the starting lineup right there. You'll find the dog. It'll connect you to the shelter. If you click through, you'll be able to be connected to that shelter. Now, don't worry. 
these puppies do get snapped up very quickly on Puppy Bowl Sunday. But if the puppy you fell in love with is not available at your shelter, remember, guys, they're often part of a litter. So there's, you know, they probably have some brothers and sisters who are there in the shelter and need your love, too. That's very well put. And I want to get this out there again. Folks, it's animalplanet.com slash puppy bowl. And I am very impressed, Dan, that you got 37 shelters in the U.S. and Puerto Rico. Come on. <laughs> are these a trilingual pups? I mean, are they speaking oh, yes. English and oh, Spanish? The, and the mix. English, Spanish, and Spanglish. <laughs> <laughs> Spanglish. <laughs> you know, the hybrid of the two, which you hear a lot. Yes, yes. You got some cool things here. I got to get to them right away. Sure. You got a cat, celebrity, catty, furry, doing the halftime show. The other big game has Katy Perry. And, you know, the cat kingdom is not without its own princess's pop. And that would be Catty Furry performing (laughs) a, interestingly enough, a Katy Perry song. So that's What is she going to be performing? Do you know? I cannot tell you. Yes, I do. It's a fantastic show. We are sworn to secrecy. Uh, okay. And already I feel like I've given away too much in saying that it's a Katy Perry song. Maybe I'll get into trouble for that. Well, I'm thinking of I, I hissed a girl and liked it, but I don't know if Caddy's going to do that. It's a more it's a more recent song, and it really, really is exciting. The kitten halftime show this year is different from in past years. In past years, we just basically had them playing on the cat toys and, you know, on this mm-hmm. giant, like, yeah. carpeted kitten wonderland. This year is a little different. The Let's just say there's a lot more action going on at halftime, Ooh. so you'll enjoy it. Well, I'm just thinking Catty Furry has got to be one cool cat to mingle with all these young mutts. I mean, seriously. Oh, yeah. You know, that's yeah, one yeah. cool cat. We and try I not to let the puppies too close because they, otherwise they get a little <laughs> distracted. You know what I mean? We want them focused on the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the outfit, is this true? Her outfit is designed by someone who designs outfits for Paris Hilton? Oh, yes, yes. Because I'm sure you guys know this, you know, working so closely with pets all the time. There is a whole world of puppy and cat fashion out there. Oh, yeah. You know there is. And, you know, there are people who make their living designing for dogs and cats. It's incredible. And, yes, that is a fact. And Caddy Furry up for adoption, or is Caddy Furry somebody's cat? No. Four one one. Norm, I would tell you that about, in all sincerity, ninety eight percent of the animals you see at pet club people, whether the cats, kittens, or our goat cheerleaders, every mm-hmm. year we have different cheerleading animals represented. Yeah, we're going to segue into are, that in a second. Yeah, but <laughs> most of those, right, from the all twelve types of animals, are available for adoption. Certainly the okay. 21 kittens participating in the kitten halftime show are available. But okay. when we have our special guest stars like Caddy Furry, no, they're kind of their own sort of like, yeah. you know, internet sensation pet stars. And no, they've already oh, yeah. got a home. Yeah, it's like talk to the paw, my agent, you know, give me some organic right. cat. Uh, maybe, maybe, people. maybe I'll talk to you, right? They got yeah. their people, yeah. Now you yeah. have some <laughs> special cheerleaders this year and nah, I'm not going to get around. Tell us about your cheerleaders this year. <laughs> Yeah, you, you hinted at it, and I said it earlier. They're Nigerian dwarf goats. I want to get the name right. From <laughs> a farm here in New Jersey. Yes, of course. From a farm here in New Jersey. They're really cute because they do stay small. And they actually were surprisingly, we expected them to kind of chew through the scenery and give them a hard time. <laughs> but, you know, they were terrific. Putting a pom-pom on them is a little more uh, difficult than you'd expect. But yeah. they did a pretty good job. We kind of kept them off to the side, so they were still cheering on at the action. But we didn't mix them too closely with the puppies and cats, you know, safety yeah. sake. And now, they um, up who came great. up with this idea? I mean, seriously, I can just see you guys in production meetings each year for the Puppy Bowl, coming up with it, making it bigger and better. You know, you're thinking outside the litter box, excuse me. Yep. So mm-hmm. Nigerian dwarf goats, how in the heck did you think of that for cheerleaders? I mean, do they have we, a special yeah. cheer or I'm not sure? We thought with goats, the first thought with goats, well, we hadn't ever done a goat yet. But we also thought, you know, they've got that nice bass down. And we thought that might yeah. sound good on the sideline. It a sounds lot like a boo. For the four leggers, yeah. <laughs> it might, yeah, right. No, no, no. Thankfully, if you hear it during the game, you'll see it's more of a cheer than a boo. Thankfully, yeah. <laughs> you know, so they're nice and loud, which we liked, which we thought would make them good cheerleaders. And right. second, every year, if there isn't a sideline cheerleader, we try to link them somehow to the game. This year, it was more of just we wanted a nice, loud animal. Last year, we had penguins because the Super Bowl was held in New York and right. everyone said it'd be cold. So people said, well, penguins will make sense. And so we try to somehow, you know, link to what's going on (laughs) in real life. This year was more of a random choice. I think Norwegian uh, dwarf goats are much better than a tumbleweed because you're going to Arizona where it's going to be hot. And so I think you made a good call. Yeah, I think you made a good call. So to give people an idea, I know we're going to tune in at 3 o'clock Eastern on Super Bowl Sunday. That's February 1st on Animal Planet. What's the field like? How big is this field? Where is this secret hiding place? Where is your field? 
Now, Give us a little tease about how this field looks. Are these dogs all getting, hanging out in secret rooms and they plow onto the field? How do you orchestrate is this? Is there a puppy locker room? Yeah. yeah. we have. It's more of a puppy holding room. It's this <laughs> giant warehouse kind of space where everyone, all the lovely volunteers and shelters, bring their dogs and keep them <laughs> until it's ready for game time. The field itself is smaller than you might think. It's 10 feet by 20 feet. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> So, yeah, man, that's it. And you have not got much room. And you have to remember, there's also one entire side of the four sides is a plexiglass wall and behind which, of course, we put up all our cameras and our lights, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a okay. lot going on on that tiny field. <laughs> now, we got to get into it. It is the deflate gate time. I'm just thinking, you got a yeah. pack of chewers. Your footballs mm-hmm. might get punctured or something. I mean, I think these it's are the, legitimately yeah. deflated balls, and, and oh, I yeah. couldn't even go into See, that about them being it, neutered, but we <laughs> won't. But, um, right, that's the great joke. You know, it's the exact opposite for us, whereas in the NFL, they're concerned if the balls are deflated. <laughs> We're concerned if the balls stay inflated. That means that the puppies have not been picking them up. You know, we're not Tom Brady. We don't have opposable thumbs here that we can use to grip our ball. We have our jaws. We have our razor sharp teeth often. And that's the right. only thing these pups, you know, sometimes they'll kick the ball, but most often they're, they're biting. So, yeah, if a ball's not deflated, it means these guys are not playing the game. All right. I'm really glad to hear about that. Now, folks, we're talking with Dan Schachner. He is the ref of the Puppy Bowl. We're going to break for a quick commercial because he's in snowy New York City, so dedicated to be on our show. He can't even hail a cab, and he's talking to us. This is a cool guy. But we're all going to sit and stay, get in a huddle, stay warm. We'll be right back. Yep. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Hi, I'm Dana Humphrey, also known as the Pet Lady. I travel from coast to coast to pet trade shows and consumer events to scout out what the hottest, hippest, and most unique pet products are on the planet, bringing you tips and tricks from top veterinarians, groomers, trainers on how to safely travel and live happily with your pets. The Pet Lady will be in a city near you, showing off the latest and greatest tech pet gadgets, cozy comforts, and fab gift ideas for man's and woman's best friends. You can learn more at thepetlady.net or connect socially and tweet with me at Pet Lady World. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is John O'Hurley reminding you you're listening to the O Behave Show with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to O Behave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Now, years ago, folks, I was a sports writer and covered a couple of Super Bowls. I thought that was pretty cool. But you know what? I wish I was at the Puppy Bowl. You know what? Next year, we should go to the Puppy Bowl. I know you tape it and all that, but mm-hmm. I would love mm-hmm. to do uh, in person next year. So you've been on my oh. show twice. Let's make third Please time come. a charm and let's yep. get together and we'll we'll have some fun. But... The Super Bowl is great. The commercials are great. And I hope you're not getting arrested right now for making a snow angel. Nope. Just typical New York City. Set. Just the soundtrack of NYC. That's okay. <laughs> but, you know, you do a lot of things. What inspires you to be the ref? Come on. Give us the, yeah. as that new talk show guy goes, make it 100. You know, make it real. What's sure. the real reason yeah. you're doing this? Oh, my gosh. It's the love of dogs. No question about it. I mean, I grew up around dogs. We foster dogs as a family now. We have a lot of love for puppies. And when you match that with how big the puppy bowl has become, when you match that with how much, I guess, awareness we're spreading about adoption from rescue centers and shelters versus from, a, you know, buying from a breeder or a pet store, when we're getting that word across, so you've got a fun event, you've got this wonderful message, and you've got sort of the greatest cutest job in the world. I mean, my kids, I have a six and an eight-year-old who think I have, they, first of all, no, let me put it more real for you. They think the Puppy Bowl is real. In other words, we put together these scores and these teams and we have the dramatic music. They take it all seriously. They're more aware of the score of Puppy Bowl when they watch than anyone else is. And they think these guys are really training. It's really cute and adorable. And so for all of those reasons, you know, the Puppy Bowl has been and remains 
the greatest job I've ever had. I mean, who could not want this? I guess the only better job might be if I were that, I forget that name, um, Mr. Fry, David Fry, the guy who heads up the West Coast. Oh, yeah, show. he's that, a great guy. Yeah, he, That'd yeah, be another great well. job, too, you know? But if I can't have that one day, then I'll stick with Puppy Bull Rush. <laughs> well, think of all the breeds that are out there now. There's over 150 dog yeah. breeds, and some of them look like they could be like super califragilistic. There's some mm-hmm. really tough tongue-twisting names now for dogs. Oh, so I think Puppy oh, yeah. Bull is a better fit. Now, speaking Speaking of it, though, you know, there are going to be some feisty puppies there. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your favorite penalties you might be blowing your whistle on. Yeah, well, every year the list grows, as you can imagine, you know. <laughs> Last year we had our first ever terrorizing the ref penalty. I mean, that was because <laughs> I'd never been involved in a penalty as the ref, you know. I was like, get myself out of the action. But the infraction was so egregious that I had to throw a flag down. Guy what was, happened? You know, what this, happened? Well, a- yeah, a little ginger. This, it was a chihuahua mix, if I remember Oh, they're always the little ones, small and mighty, but a little, a little bit mighty. Yeah, little yep. tough ones. And, you know, basically, you know, pulled my sock all the way down, nearly tore it off. And I have long <laughs> socks when I'm the ref. So that exposed a lot of leg people, and we're still a family <laughs> channel. So that happened. So that was a brand new penalty, you know what I mean? And yeah. then, this, you know, we don't want to always have the same pun penalties. You know, you can only right. say pause interference too many times, so many times. Right. Illegal formation only gets you so much mileage. What you need to do over time is see what else is going out there and find new fun ways to say it. So we do have some exciting new penalties this year. I want everyone to encourage everyone to watch and sure. see what they are because when they come out, they're really something new. And you'll see that. Like, oh, yeah. How come, how come I never thought of that? Now, remember, we have the penalties that are, you know, influenced by real penalties in the NFL. But we also have penalties that are specific only to puppy bowl that only puppies would really be accused of. Illegal <laughs> napping. We have excessive cuteness. That, of course, oh, yeah. happens all the time. You know, we have, oh, oh excessive hydration because we do have a water bowl on the field. Oh. And often that water bowl is abused. Yep. So that needs to get thrown down. Wallflowering. That simply means, you know, you're off to the sidelines, not interested in the action, not wanting Aww. to play. You know, yeah. shy, really shyness is another way to put that. So I those like are the those wallflower ones. better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are all real penalties. So well, and they continue to grow every year. Now, as a ref... You know, the NFL has had the referees are not going to be getting big awards and applause from NFL fans because any right, right. niner team, there has been mm-hmm. some bonehead calls and then there's been some flagrant calls that haven't been even flagged. You're yeah. a ref with puppies. Do you think you're in a better position with puppies than if you were like an NFL ref? I think I'm in a worse position with puppies because let me put it like this. On at least with human football, right? It's 11 on 11. You know what the numbers are each and every time. So there's 22 guys. And then on top of that, 22 players, there are multiple refs during the NFL. You know, there's refs that they call umpires. There's refs that they call refs. There's (laughs) sideline officials. You've got a lot of eyes on this game. I'm one ref, the only official in a sea of 55 dogs that I've got to keep track of. Not all at the same time. But sometimes there's as many as 20 on the field at once on a tiny miniaturized field, which we just talked about. Right. I'm not playing a tiny violin for myself. I'm just saying I think my job is much harder. I, and as I can <laughs> see to say, we've got them in teams this year. So I've got to actually imagine, think about, are they actually playing for their own team? Or are they playing for the opposite team? Oh. We've never had to worry about that. The past, Taking puppy if, bribes, little doggy treats to blow a play. I'm telling you, in the past, if a puppy was dragged a chew toy into the opposite end zone, his own end zone, he wouldn't care. Oh, sure, we'll count that as a touchdown. Everybody wins. Not anymore. Now we're oh. cracking the whip. So, yeah, things are really getting tough this year. Now, the outfits that they're wearing, Team Rough and Team Fluff, are there different yeah. colors? Can you at least tell us that? or how are? What's yeah, the, I mean, it's slightly different colors, you know, based on the red, white, and blue team. You know, it's a patriotic okay. team still. And, uh, yeah, they have little tiny jerseys. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, they don't always stay on. Okay, there's a lot of wardrobe malfunctions. And it's because, once again, they're puppies. They're not professionals. The clothes are going to fall to the ground. You may just see some see some puppies with the entire game not wear their jersey. That's okay. <laughs> we try. So when you're not doing the puppy bowl, I know mm-hmm. that, you know, folks listen to this man's voice. He does a lot of voiceover work, commercials. Thank You've been you. on TV, things like that. Tell us about Dan Shackner outside the puppy bowl. What's coming up for you? And give us a little floor. That's so nice. You're very kind. Yeah, I do a lot of voiceover work. Thankfully, I don't have to get dressed up for it in, in stripes. I love my stripes, but it's nice to put them in the closet sometimes. And uh, this year, what's newest is I'm narrating a series for for the Discovery Channel called Extreme Engineering Big Reveal. So oh. that is an entire really cool series. It has nothing to do with puppies. I'm putting on sort of like, you know, physics hat, engineering hat, 
and nice. talking about that for a while. I'm also doing commercials for Subway Sandwiches, different banks, and, and I also work as the voice of uh, the network Showtime and the network Spike TV. So, oh, nice, you know, the nice. nice thing about voiceover, I can do a little something everywhere, you know, and not get... Everywhere and in your underwear, well, right? Well, I didn't want to say that, but, you know, if I do it from home, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're, we're I'm doing this lounge. show... Skype from uh, beautiful Dallas, Texas. My producer's in southern Florida, and you're in snowy New York, and you have oh no gosh. clue what I'm wearing or not, do you? I was going to say, if we could take a picture of the three of us right now, it would be completely <laughs> different, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing. But no, folks, I am closed. I don't want to scare anybody. Um, so let's repeat this again. If folks are up for sure. adoption, where can mm-hmm. they tune in? It's 3 o'clock February 1st on Animal yep. Planet, the 11th Annual Puppy Bowl. But give us more yeah. information because I know there's sure. going to be folks wanting to get some yeah, of these great well, you know The fun thing is, yeah, thank you. February 1st, it's on at 3. If you missed the 3 o'clock, don't worry. There's a 5 p.m. broadcast, a 7 p.m. broadcast, a 9. And here's the cool part, guys. Every episode is going to be different from the one before it because oh, nice. we all have a different MVP based on audience voting. In oh, every nice. one of the initial episodes, till about sometime in the evening, I think about nine, I think, the audience votes on who they want the MVP to be. And therefore, for every episode, we crown a different winner. Oh, it nice. might be the same winner if everybody falls in love with the same dog each time. But mm-hmm. most likely, as it has happened in past years, we have different winners. So it keeps the game exciting. You can still watch that other big game and switch back to us or watch us before or after. Don't worry. Not a problem. We're not forcing you to choose between the two. And then prior to that, oh, again, of course, if you see an animal, go to animalplanet.com puppy bowl slash puppy bowl and find the dog. And, you know, you can certainly get hooked up with a shelter and find out what else might be available for adoption. The other great thing is you can go to Animal Planet right now and see there's a lot of Puppy Bowl videos. You can see the starting lineup. There's some great intro videos about Puppy Bowl. There's a pregame show that we've created this year that you can watch. The rest, myself, I've done some fun videos promoting Puppy Bowl. So you can kind of get your Puppy Bowl fix ahead of time, get a sneak peek at the starting lineup, and just, you know, just sort of get jazzed for Sunday uh, right now. Oh, that sounds great. And there will be 21 kittens plus the celebrity, Caddy Furry, and a handful of Nigerian dwarf goats from New Jersey, of course, as cheerleaders. It can't get any better than this, folks. I mean, seriously, folks, I have a feeling this is going to be a lot more excitement, shall I say it, than Super Bowl 49. I love both teams, but it's been surrounded in controversy. There's no controversy here, folks. There's only piddles on the field. That's it. These are (laughs) pure athletes not getting a big paycheck they just want a forever home and leading this charge is the one and only ref dan shackner dan i really thank you for being thank you such a great guy to be on the show in the middle of a snowstorm thank you so much guys thanks for having me and you know go puppy bowl i really appreciate you guys support over the years all right everybody this time i want to give a big touchdown excitement salute to also my producer mark winter he is the producer of pet life radio 60 shows strong go check them out and until next time this is your flea free host arden moore delivering just two words to all you two three and four leggers out there oh behave Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.